like to move on now to a sector that has been enjoying exceedingly good times lately, and that is the uh, tanker sector. And I'd like to welcome Tim Smith to the Sea Trade Maritime Podcast. Thank you very much. Tim, thank you so much for taking the time. Perhaps, uh, yeah, if, uh, could you tell our listeners how you see that demand and supply outlook for the tanker sector in the coming year? Yeah, definitely. It's a sector that's seen its fortunes change rapidly and probably just worth giving a little bit of background to that. It was a rags to riches story really in 2022. Tanker market, as every sector did, experienced um, huge disruption from the pandemic and oil demand obviously hit very hard by travel restrictions. We saw a recovery from that in both demand and production from major oil producers through 2021 and into 2022. We then saw the pretty swift and abrupt impact of the invasion of Ukraine affecting the sector. The immediate impact of that was to push tanker spot rates up very quickly. And then subsequently, we've seen trade flows or saw trade flows change rapidly in response to uh, sanctions on Russia. And we saw dynamic shift in favour of longer haul voyages for oil coming out of Russia as Europe reduced its intake. The consequence of that for the tanker market in 2022 was that we saw conditions go at the start of the year from very weak uh, spot markets to uh, through the year um, very strong spot earnings both for the crude and product markets. We saw ton miles as I say grow very quickly as we saw more Russian crude diverted out um, away from Europe to, uh, for example, Asia into India and China, and also Europe needing to import its oil from different sources, both for crude and products, increasing the import ton mile component of the market as well. So the demand side for the tanker sector became very complex very quickly, and it changed very quickly as well. And it's still changing now as we enter 2023, we have full sanctions imposed or bans on seaborne crude from Russia to Europe. Last December, we have a similar imposition on products, primarily diesel that moves from Russia to Europe coming in in February. So the disruption to the market and wider trade picture and patterns continues to change. So as I mentioned, the multiplying effect, if you like, on demand from this, coming from the distance component of trade flows, was very strong in 2022. We think that the overall trade growth was doubled in terms of deadweight demand for tankers, primarily as a consequence of this ton mile increase last year. And in 2023, we expect that multiplying effect to continue. So although we do expect trade growth to slow a bit. So last year, we, we estimated oil tanker demand growth for crude and products at about 8%. When you factor in all of this additional ton mile effect, we think that will slow down to about 5% in 2023. But the consequence will still be a buoyant market, buoyant underlying fundamentals. Although we do expect some moderation in spot earnings. We expect some fluctuation. And I think there are a number of factors behind that. One of them being the restrictive production policy of OPEC plus. And so we saw them actually making some cuts in terms of their targets in Q4. And we also expect some of the post pandemic demand outside of China, the underlying oil demand growth to slow a bit. So that's going to have some effects on overall trade growth in 23. But we still expect a positive demand outlook. And more broadly, when I talk about moderation, we saw some very extreme highs in Q4 2022. So we're still expecting overall levels for the tanker market to be what would be characterized as strong in 2023. And it's that disruption, that ton mile effect that's really providing the underlying support. China also opening up in Q4 22. Historically, China's been the kind of engine, if you like, in terms of oil demand and also oil import demand, particularly for crude oil. 
Um, we're expecting it to return significantly in, in 2023 and kind of regain that status as the market's primary or key driver, particularly on the crude side. It's also increasing its product exports. Uh, we're also expecting to see a lot of refining capacity coming on stream in 2023 as well in China, also in the Middle East as well. And that's going to likely drive up product exports and support more product flows on long haul basis into Europe to substitute um, Russian imports. So there's a lot going on in terms of the tanker market uh, on the demand side, a lot to keep track of. Uh, it's becoming an increasingly complex space. It's also been a very volatile market in 2022. And, and we do expect some of that volatility to continue given the wider disruption in the sector. No, certainly there was an awful lot of different factors you just brought up there, incredibly complicated. And some phenomenal numbers there in terms of changes and things like the ton mile demand. Could you just give our listeners a bit more colour on, you talked a little bit about freight rates, so could you give us a bit, a bit more colour on where you see them headed, uh, both sort of um, spot rates and charter rates in 2023? Yes, so we've seen markets reach extreme highs in Q4. And obviously when you see that kind of elevated booming market and you see the kind of volatility we've seen in the spot market conditions get quite difficult to precisely estimate in terms of fundamentals our expectation for 2023 is that we will see some moderation in overall levels of earnings but we still expect them to stay fairly high certainly in comparison to you know the start of 2022 and, and particularly 2021 when we saw very weak markets so we're looking at earnings levels in the sector and i should also add actually that 2022 is quite different because we saw quite a different spread in terms of earnings vlccs were, were relatively weak for much of the year versus other sectors driven by some of the weakness we saw in china where we actually saw oil demand growth contract last year for china so we expect some relative improvement in VLCCs versus other markets. And if you like a little reorganization or normalization in terms of that distribution of earnings, but we're likely to see, you know, in terms of the, the charter market, the period market, one year time charter rates for VLCCs still in the kind of 30 to $40,000 per day range across on average in 2022. Um, and certainly starting the year higher than that. We expect some moderation in the first half of the year. What we're also expecting, as I haven't really touched on, is on the supply side, the, the tanker order book is very constructive, if you like, for fundamentals. It's low relative to history. So the supply side, as we move through 2023 and into 24 and beyond, is likely to become more benign and more of a positive driver, particularly as we expect to see more scrapping further out in terms of pushing up the underlying utilisation rate. So although we expect some moderation in, in the first half of 2023, in the longer term, we expect conditions to pick up. And I would expect also to see, given all of the factors we talked about swirling around the market, quite a lot of volatility in spot markets. So it's, it's going to be a, uh, a positive picture in our view, but we will see some natural fluctuation, given the turbulence in the underlying oil market that's uh, surrounding the tanker sector. So, yeah, overall, a, a very positive outlook. And I suppose that volatility also creates opportunities. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure tanker owners will be um, appreciating the very strong conditions they've seen, certainly versus what they were experiencing in 2021 and early 2022. Indeed, I'm sure, that, I'm sure that's the case. Thank you, Daniel. There's an awful lot to take in there.